morning rock on Primal Drive with me, Caleb Anderson, aka Primal 1806. So this morning I want to talk about the future of gaming. Because uh, we saw the future of gaming coming in the form of Xbox One digital delivery, uh, downloadable content, all that sort of thing. Uh, the PC has had a good strong glimpse of the future of gaming for a long time. And, and I was really annoyed when Xbox was launched and then they canned a heap of their digital rights management technology in order to make the masses happy for game rental and and game resell. So the future of gaming, this is what I think gaming is going to do over the next five to ten years. And then let's take the lesson from the past. We, we used to go to the movies to watch new movies, then they bought out VHS so we could watch movies at home. And then after videos we had DVD because we wanted higher quality and basically everyone had a, a media center and a, a presentation media and a home theater systems that sort of thing and now we're starting to see the delivery of content on demand Netflix another prime example so that entertainment media that's gone through those stages of, of going out somewhere then bringing a, a copy home and then streaming to your location and I can only feel that gaming is headed in the same direction let's take all the all the hints and cues out there in the market so we've already got downloadable content so we can download the six gigabytes of game onto our computers and and play them as we wish but look at the PlayStation launch of their Gakai uh, cloud service and the Xbox cloud service. Well, Gakai, what they're going to do with Gakai on PlayStation is essentially stream old PS3 games and that sort of thing. You know, classic games that people want to play from their PlayStation 3 days on their PlayStation 4s. PlayStation have got the Gakai service, which is going to stream gaming content to your console. So I'm assuming, you know, if you've got a game big enough, it's just going to be streaming the game in the background. Not necessarily frame by frame as you play, but the actual game in the background. So instead of having to download six gigabytes, you download the initial, you know, hundred gigabytes of basic engine, and then every component that it needs, it, it's pulling down while you're playing the previous level. Microsoft Cloud Service is doing a similar thing, and you know Microsoft are capable of doing a similar thing because if you've installed Office 2013 lately, which I have several times, so the Cloud Service. So I started installing. Uh, office on my wife's computer and it, it popped up with this message saying hey you can stream office to your computer no need to wait so I double click on the on the word icon and it didn't load instantly it said hang on a second we're just loading a few things for you so it loaded a few things for me no more than a, a wait screen for a computer game really up came word and it said look there's it's a reduced set of functionality but we're loading more features in the background traffic is crap this morning it's so crap and so I could start using Word straight away, interacting with the components I wanted and the things that I wanted on demand started streaming to my computer. Now, this is what Oracle talked about in the 80s. It's what, uh, it's what Bill Gates talked about in the 90s about, you know, .NET and all these nodes and streaming content and having a dumb terminal. And it's the sort of thing that Chrome, um, you know, the Chrome PC is doing at the moment. It's just a dumb terminal that loads up a web browser and you load everything through that. So it's the same concept that, that, not Oracle, sorry, Sun. Sun came up with in the 80s. Because um, Sun were the benevolent dictators. Um, and they were very, 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 they saw into the future a long way. That just the technology wasn't there. By the way, Breakfast of Champions. And so here we are at this point in, in time where Microsoft was seriously able to start delivering this sort of downloaded streaming gaming content. And the world screamed, oh no, we don't want that. What's wrong with you people? Oh, we don't want that. Personally, it didn't affect me because I buy maybe four or five AAA titles a year, buy a couple of little games online. I never sell my games back to, to EB Games or GameStop in other countries because they give me seven bucks fifty for a game that cost me a hundred dollars. No thanks, I'll just keep the game and when I want to get nostalgic, I'll pull it out and play it. I, I was excited by this future and lots of people screamed and went, oh, we can't handle it. It's just like, oh, whatever. Whatever, seriously. Grow up, this is the future and it's gonna be good and wonderful and you're gonna love it. Because it enables a couple of things. A, makes everything cheaper. 
we saw it with the movies, it got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And the same with games will occur, they'll become cheaper to purchase online than via a media format. Because it's just, there's no, there's no costs for the companies other than storing it on a server somewhere. The rest is all just internet bandwidth. Yes, there are costs with having everything on a um, content distribution network or a CDN, um, which is how YouTube delivers all its content. And so there's going to be costs in that infrastructure, but that's cheaper than having distribution and multiple employees all over the place. Now you're engaging a third party to just host content. Much easier, much quicker to deliver, much more rapidity to get it to the market. And if you want to change the base product, if there's a major glitch or bug in it, then you can do it on a content delivery network with your base product that you store there, rather than having to reship your product to a thousand different stores. For those of you who like grabbing a, a DVD or a Blu-ray or whatever, you may get disappointed in the near future. It might be the same with movies. I mean, my wife collects all the Disney movies. I'm probably going to have to start buying them digitally. I think the future of gaming is bright in terms of you know that delivery medium. Uh, in terms of gameplay, I think we're probably going to be stuck with the same types of gameplays. You know, first-person shooter, real-time strategy, that sort of thing. Um, I think the Kinect will bring in a whole new element of gameplay as well. Uh, a lot of people are going, oh, I can't see the value. The physical interaction stuff and the accuracy with the new Kinect, I think, is gonna gonna show us that it's it's really possible to do something cool with Kinect. Ghost Recon Future Warfighter showed us a little bit, like a little taste of what a, a first-person shooter could do with Kinect. Well, thanks for joining me on my drive. Get it, primal drive. Yeah, my dad. So good. Thanks for joining me on my drive, and I'll see you online.